Good morning. A beautiful piano music from Asael. Thank you for being here with us this morning. Let's give another round of applause. Well, good morning and welcome on this Memorial Day Sunday. We are glad that you are here and that we can gather together as the body of Christ and celebrate and recognize this day together. A few announcements before we begin service. We are glad that you're here, and we'd love to know that you are here this morning. You can let us know by scanning the QR code that's on the screen if you have a smartphone handy, or you can um, fill out one of the brightly colored cards on the back of the pews in front of you and put that in the offering plate when it's passed here later in the service. Um, keep your eye out for um, the Derby Prime Timers next event. That is a week from today, June 2nd um, at 6.30. It's going to be at the Schrader's residence. It is a garden party, and tickets are still available in the church office. They are $10 a piece. You can get those um, still yet today um, and, and make sure that you're able to attend. Just a reminder, our Derby Prime Timers is a group for folks 55 and over, and you don't have to be a member of Woodlawn to attend. It's open to all of the Derby community. Make sure you bring a lawn chair if you plan to attend. There is also um, the bus available if you'd like to meet at the church and take the bus. Let them know that when you buy your ticket so that we can make a note and have that registration. Well, and also a week from today, um, there's going to be um, a final sermon given from yours truly, and we'll have a little reception after church. So um, I'd love to, to see you and love to be able to share some memories together um, for, for my farewell next week. And then in, um, on June 16th, we have another celebration, but we're celebrating a, a, a big retirement celebration for Pastor Lance. So we're so grateful for Pastor Lance and for um, not only his years of ministry here at Woodlawn, but years of ministry at all the previous churches that he served and that we are celebrating him on June 16th. There are memory books in the church office um, if you want to stop in any time, any Sundays between now and then, or if you want to stop in during the week, those are out and available, and you can write down memories uh, for uh, myself or for Pastor Lance. Both have books in the office that you can write memories in. And if you're planning to um, attend Pastor Lance's retirement, we do ask that you RSVP for the luncheon. Um, this is the last Sunday to RSVP, but you can still call in during the week until May 30th. Um, we, the luncheon, remember, is of no charge, um, but we just need a head count to give the catering. Um, then, um, does anybody here like a good sandwich? I like a good sandwich, yeah. Well, we have cards available in the church office um, for you to use um, for Jersey Mike's. And um, what it is, is that you use these cards. Um, it's a $3 donation to Justice Together. And giving those $3 to Justice Together gets you a free sandwich from Jersey Mike's. So um, if you want to pick up one of those, that can go, um, you can find that in the church office. Just a reminder, Justice Together is our Sedgwick County um, multi-faith justice organization that is um, working right now to improve um, the homelessness rates and to improve access to mental health care. So those three dollars that go to, to support those important causes and efforts can also get you a free sandwich. Check out the church office if you'd like to get one today. Yeah. Thanks, Lance. Important note that the cards are to be used um, tomorrow, Tuesday, or Wednesday. There's three days to use them. So if you pick them up, make sure you've got sandwiches on the menu now between now and Wednesday. 
Lastly, we are, um, it's that time to start looking for VBS volunteers. So if you would like to help with the Vacation Bible School, um, not only is this a great ministry to reach out to our children, but also to reach out to the community and, and to reach out to children of the community. Talk to Kendra, our children's director, or call the church office if you'd like to help. Those are our announcements this morning. You can find all of those details as well as some others um, in the church newsletter or on the church website, woodlawnumc.net. At this time, I want to invite Mary Matley forward. Mary is going to lead us in our call to worship this morning. Good morning. If you're able, would you please stand and join me in the call to worship? God, sometimes we show up to worship ready to encounter your presence. We know you are always with us. We catch glimpses of you in our lives and our relationships with others, but we hesitate sometimes, for your glory, your love, and your holiness can be overwhelming. And yet we know you are always with us in the fullness of your presence. Ready our hearts today to encounter more of your glory, your love, and your holiness that is always with us. We come today to enter the presence of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God and all and all. Amen. Our morning hymn this morning is, O oh God, Our Help in Ages Past. It is number 117 in your hymnals or on the screen. for missions this morning is the comfort meals. When a loved one dies, there is often a long list of things that need to be done. There are calls, decisions, and plans to be made, all on top of experiencing grief and deep loss. If you've lost a loved one, perhaps you can relate. One way we, as a church, can help ease this burden is by providing a meal and hospitality for families following funeral services. This allows the family time to connect and grieve together. 
It is truly a ministry of compassion and healing. This ministry is only possible with financial support and volunteers. Please consider supporting this ministry by giving the gift of your time or giving financial donations to help us ensure that these meals are provided at no cost to the family. If you are interested in volunteering, please contact the church office. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. At this time, we want to invite the ushers forward to receive our tithes, our offerings, and our gifts. Holy and merciful God, we offer up to you our tithes and our offerings. We offer up to you our very own lives, praying all that we give, all that we do, all that we are might bring honor and glory to you. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated.
We come now in a time of prayer to lift our joys and our concerns together. A few um, celebrations to note. Um, Coffees on Me today is provided by Mitch and Pam Hansen in celebration of Norm Wagner's 90th birthday. Let's celebrate that. Another celebration, the flowers on the altar, these purple, pink flowers in the middle, are, are in celebration of Mike and Karen Harms Brown in celebration of their 10th wedding anniversary. We celebrate with you this morning. Our um, other flower bouquet on the altar is from Jack Stover's uh, memorial from his service. So we remember Jack as well this morning. Some prayer updates to share. Um, Don Layton is home from the hospital and sitting in a pew this morning here in worship. We are glad to have you here, Don. We want to continue to lift up those who have been receiving uh, medical care and are home um, from receiving that care. Charlene, Ruby, Linda, Tony, all those names are in your bulletin. Um, Please make note of them and keep them in your prayers this morning. As well as there's a list of names in your bulletin of folks who request ongoing prayers. We lift them up in our prayers today and invite you to read over those in your bulletin. If you are joining us online in our live worship this morning and you'd like a list of those names, please call the church office. Let's be a people in prayer together. Holy God, we have much to be grateful for on this Memorial Day weekend. God, we are thankful for those who have served in the armed forces and who now rest from their labors. We are grateful for their sacrifice, for their love of country, for their pursuit of freedom for all people. We pray that you help each of us to do our part in seeking peace rather than conflict, seeking common ground rather than division, and in seeking mutual understanding rather than fear and mistrust. God, we give thanks for our loved ones, those beside us, and those who have transitioned to your glory. Help us to embrace opportunities to remember and to honor them, to give thanks to you for them and to grieve or remember with joy as we need. God, we give you thanks for summer that is upon us. We give you thanks for rain and growth and sunshine, for green grass and budding trees. Help us embrace change. Embrace the the change of pace, change of rhythm. Help us find time to enjoy your beautiful creation. And God, as we anticipate a new season ahead and give thanks for the seasons of our lives, we also think of those who are in seasons of grief, loss, illness, financial insecurity, depression, loneliness, housing insecurity, seasons of change, or any other season of difficulty. Move within us, God. Help us to be reflections of you, reflections of your hope, that your love, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and self-control might work through us by the power of the Holy Spirit, that we might bear the fruit of your grace in our lives, in our communities, and in our world. Holy God, we bundle all our prayers together now, those spoken, those unspoken, and we lift them up to you as we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to remain seated for our prayer hymn this morning. Take time to be holy. We'll be singing the first and the second verse only on page 395, or the words are on the screen. Memorials placed into service since our last observance on Memorial Day weekend last year will now be presented by Pam Schrader, our Woodlawns lay leader. As each person's name is read, we invite family members to stand as they are able, as the gift is recognized and consecrated. The memorials will be presented in the order in which they were placed into service. We come now to present these gifts to be consecrated to the glory of Almighty God, and for service in and through Woodlawn United Methodist Church. It's for a memorial garden brick installed in loving memory of Gordon Murray. May his memory be honored by the consecration of this gift. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we consecrate this gift to the glory of God in memory of God's servant, Gordon Murray. The memory of the righteous is ever blessed. Our next memorial has been distributed to the General Memorial Fund in loving memory of Robert Bob Cords. May his memory be honored by the consecration of this gift. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we consecrate this gift to the glory of God in memory of God's servant, Robert Bob Cords. The memory of the righteous is ever blessed. Our next memorial has been distributed to the Heavenly Medals Bell Choir Fund, the Sanctuary Choir Fund, the Children's Ministry Fund, the Youth Ministry Fund, and the General Operating Fund in loving memory of Dwayne Mikesell. May his memory be honored by the consecration of this gift. And in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we consecrate these gifts to the glory of God in memory of God's servant, Dwayne Mikesell. The memory of the righteous is ever blessed. Our next memorial has been distributed to the General Memorial Fund in loving memory of Don Berry. May his memory be honored by the consecration of this gift. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we consecrate this gift to the glory of God in memory of God's servant, Don Berry. The memory of the righteous is ever blessed. Our next memorial has been distributed to the General Memorial Fund in loving memory of Ann Moore. May her memory be honored by the consecration of this gift. And in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we consecrate this gift to the glory of God in memory of God's servant, Anne Moore. The memory of the righteous is ever blessed. Our next memorial has been distributed to the General Memorial Fund in loving memory of Carol Kistner. May her memory be honored by the consecration of this gift. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we consecrate this gift to the glory of God in memory of God's servant, Carol Kistner. The memory of the righteous is ever blessed. Our next memorial has been distributed to the General Memorial Fund in loving memory of Paul Meering. May his memory be honored by the consecration of this gift. 
And in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we consecrate this gift to the glory of God in memory of God's servant, Paul Muring. The memory of the righteous is ever blessed. Our next memorial has been distributed to the Stephen Ministry Fund, the Heavenly Medals Bell Choir Fund, and to Angel House in Tanzania in loving memory of Reverend Vic Calcote. May his memory be honored by the consecration of this gift. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we consecrate these gifts to the glory of God in memory of God's servant, Reverend Vic Calcote. The memory of the righteous is ever blessed. Our next memorial has been distributed to the Youth Ministry Fund, the Heavenly Metals Bell Choir Fund, the Kitchen Equipment Updates Fund, and to install a memorial garden brick in loving memory of Mary Wallingford. May her memory be honored by the consecration of this gift. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we consecrate these gifts to the glory of God in memory of God's servant, Mary Wallingford. The memory of the righteous is ever blessed. Our next memorial has been distributed to the Children's Ministry Fund in loving memory of Stan Locke. May his memory be honored by the consecration of this gift. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we consecrate this gift to the glory of God in memory of God's servant, Stan Locke. The memory of the righteous is ever blessed. Would you please join me in reading the prayer that is on your screen? Most loving God, without, without you, no, no words or works of ours have meaning, except the gifts of our hands as symbols of our devotion. Grant us your blessing as we have consecrated these gifts to your glory, that they may be an enduring witness before all your people, and that our lives may be consecrated in your service through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Pastor Lori. Well, in addition to our Memorial Sunday, we are also celebrating Trinity Sunday today. Will Williman, who's a retired bishop in the United Methodist Church, one of the, one of the greatest pulpiteers of United Methodism, has said a number of times that he hates preaching Trinity Sunday. You know why? It's a struggle. Christianity proclaims that the one true God which we worship and believe in really is three distinct holy persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Not three parts, three, not three beings, three persons, personhoods, but at the same time, one complete holy being. Our scripture today comes from the Gospel of Matthew. We are pretty familiar with this passage in Matthew 28. We often call it the Great Commission. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you to the end of the age. As Jesus prepares to leave the disciples... He sends them out to go make disciples themselves, telling them to baptize in the name and the authority of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, the early church took that passage and they created this doctrine of the Trinity, a belief that the one holy God is known in three distinct persons, a Father, a Son, and a Holy Spirit, but all at the same time, one God. But, you know, they seem to be three very different beings, even. I mean, there is Jesus, the Son, who talks to the Father, right? We've all read passages. There are, there are passages where uh, Jesus even talks to the Father and about the Father as a separate person to the disciples. 
The Father sends the Son in the Gospel of John, right? So God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Hmm? And just as the Father sends the Son, so now the Son, Jesus, sends the Spirit. And yet, the doctrine of the Trinity says these three are at the same time, all the time, one God. You got it figured out? Children's sermons try, you know, Bible school lessons. They try to help. They say, well, the Trinity, the Trinity, it's like an egg. You've heard that one, right? You have a shell, you have a white, you have a yolk, but all three things are parts of the whole egg. Well, sure, an egg has three parts, but the doctrine of the Trinity says explicitly that God is not composed of three different parts. The Father is fully God. The Son is completely, fully God. The Holy Spirit completely, fully God. Not parts. I hope you're getting as confused as I do. What else comes in threes? Through the centuries, the church has used all kinds of different metaphors. Water, you know, there's liquid, there's solid, there's gas, you know, a flame with three different colors or parts of the flame, an apple, a clover leaf. Each metaphor, though, fails as we wrestle with how one God can take on three forms and yet remain at the same time one whole being. It's as though God might be a, a shape shifter like those found in the Harry Potter books, right? You know, uh, first, God is the creator, the omnipresent, omniscient God, suddenly then reconstituting as a baby in a manger, which becomes a tortured human body on a cross, only to shapeshift once again to become this invisible, ethereal conscience, an inner guide that is within us and yet moves around us. But to shift shapes would be to move from one form to another. First this, then this, and then this. But yet we are taught, no, the mystery of God is that God is all three at the same time. So as Jesus speaks to the Father, God is both the one addressing God and the one hearing the Son's agony on earth. How can that be? Perhaps the Trinity isn't meant so much to describe the physical form or the shape of this one that we call God. Maybe it's not even really an attempt to describe how God appears to us. Perhaps it's a way of attempting to reconcile the story of God that we have in the Bible the three ways that God is experienced by human beings and talked about and handed down through the stories that we have received in Scripture. What we read in the Bible is, after all, what we've been told by people of God over the centuries who have experienced life with the Holy One. And in Scripture, in the Bible, what we have is a story. And I might suggest that good stories often are told in three acts. Did you know I was a theater student in college? Have I ever told you that? I studied and received my bachelor's degree in speech and drama. I see some of you nodding. Oh, that explains a lot. <laughs> and see. Many playwrights, in order to tell their story, use three acts, right? The three acts of a play. What does the first act do? Well, the first act sets the stage, puts the story in motion, introduces the characters, and introduces some conflict of sort, a problem that will need to be resolved over the course of the play. And as the characters are introduced to the audience, they choose who will be the good people, who will be the bad, who will be the hero, who will be the villain. And as the conflict is introduced, often the curtain drops in the midst of the tension. Oh no, what now? It is the second act 
where the story's complexities are explored. Sometimes new characters are even introduced. And other conflicts that sort of revolve around the center problem. Because after all, problems just like in life, they develop layers, don't they? Where we, we first, we identify uh, this problem, then that problem, then maybe a clue to the resolution of one or the other. But often we keep coming up against a dead end when it comes to the central conflict. And so we have to retrace steps in order to make some progress. Sometimes in the second act, there's even an event that first seems to be an answer, a resolution to everything that is wrong, but then we learn later it's incomplete, or maybe even it's a hoax. And so we have to go to the third act to finally, so that finally the, the full resolution might be revealed but not after a few more twists and turns often in the third act. Things sometimes get even more complicated before they get resolved. And then sometimes when we're not even expecting it, the climax happens. And it's after that great resolution that we're able to finally look back and see the unifying theme that was tying it all together. And at this time, looking back through the play, the audience often can see just how everything was playing out to lead to this very satisfying conclusion. A good drama unfolds over three acts, and no one act is complete without either the ones that come before or the ones that come after. Only three acts together tell the full story, right? Maybe the Trinity, maybe the Trinity can be thought of as God's story presented in three acts. The first act, we get to know the characters. The God that we meet in Acts 1 creates all that is. And this creator has a special relationship with humans, the other characters in the drama. And this creator has compassion for the humans when things go wrong. God hears their human cries, seeks to relieve their suffering. But the people, oh, the people rebel as they are prone to do. We're getting to know these humans somewhat in this first act also. And there are consequences to the humans' use of their free will. And while punishment, consequences, cannot be escaped, God over and over again attempts to restore the relationship. Over this first act, we see God beginning to wrestle with what is emerging as a huge problem. No matter what God does, how will God ever get these humans to understand how fully they are loved? Loved as a father loves a child so that they might, in turn, love God in return. And the curtain falls. In Act 2, when the curtain comes up, we meet brand new characters. A young, pregnant girl and her betrothed living in a little village called Nazareth. Oh, we know this part of the story very well. God attempts to reach the heart of humans by speaking their own language. And the audience finds that, that God isn't simply masquerading as a human, but that God is prone to human emotion, human pain, human tears and anxieties, even will succumb to a human death. Not only is another side of God presented in the second act, another side of human beings becomes evident as well. The ability to embody unusual cruelty. The depths of fear that will drive them to even take the life of the Son in a most tragic and unthinkable way. This is the part of the story that is so hard to watch. But 
That isn't the end of this complex second act, is it? No, act two continues with a scene that opens in the darkness of the early hours of a Sunday morning. And unbelievably, the sun makes a victorious comeback. All is not lost, as one might have thought. Now, now is the end of the story. Surely our hero lives. Oh, no. Those who know how complex a really good second act can be will hang on for all of the twists and turns. As defeat breaks into victory and we're picking up our programs and getting ready to leave, there's yet another scene. While we bask in the celebration of his defeat over death, suddenly we learn he hasn't come back. He hasn't come back to life to teach them or to lead them or even to lead a revolution over the oppressive forces that took his life. No, he's come back to say goodbye. And the sun exits upstage. And when I say upstage, I mean upstage, right? But promises a companion, an inner guide that the sun will send to them until he returns again. And his followers are perplexed. What could that mean? And the answer to that comes in the third act. Just as the sun promised humans are introduced to a God who comes now as a spirit, a spirit that moves both within them and among them, one that embodies the actions of those who believe that the Son was indeed the very Son of God. Last week, it was just last week, we celebrated the introduction of this character through wind and fire and the speaking of tongues and foreign languages. This is God, the Holy Spirit, at work now. And as the God's Holy Spirit works, so the work now is placed in human hands. And the Spirit does amazing things in and through the hands and the feet and the hearts of the apostles. They become the body. The apostles and those who follow them become the church, the body of believers as a whole, substituting, substituting for the Son until he comes again as he promises. One generation of these believers, guided by the Spirit, tell the story. They spread the news that God is known, revealed through the Son. That generation will die, and another generation will take up the story, and it will spread further to, to new lands. Surely, surely the time of the Son's return is coming near. But then that generation dies. And another generation takes up the work. And another, and another. Over two millennia, 75, 80 generations have now come and gone. Abiding by the spirit that remains with them, even though there has yet been no return. It's this final act that requires faith. For the curtain has not yet come down. It is this final act that requires faith that the same God who first created us and created everything, who, who spoke our language, demonstrated God's love and desire for us, is the same God who now walks with us and within us as the Spirit of Holy God. I suggest we're living in the third act. God's story being revealed in three acts. And as the Spirit works in us to reveal to others the Son to every new generation, and as the Son reveals the nature and the character of the Father as we learn about his life, his teachings, his love, his sacrifice. Right? And the Father revealed by the Son, the Son revealed by the Spirit. One God revealed in three acts. 
three encounters. The Spirit is in work in us today. And today as we remember and recall the lives of generations who have gone before us, and as we remember and cherish the memories of those that we love but see no more, as we wait for the Son's return and the final act of redemption, may we faithfully live into and live out the third act of God's great story. The Holy Spirit, help us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's sing our final hymn this morning. If you would stand and join me. And we will sing God be with you till we meet again. We're going to sing the first, second, and third verses. Holy, holy, holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you till we meet again. Thanks be to God. Amen.